Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 5th edition Vampire the Masquerade tabletop role-playing rules by World of Darkness. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. Listeners should know that this podcast is intended for a mature audience and will include strong language and mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and so forth, that may bear resemblance to entities living, dead, or undead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Rena Henze, and for tonight's game, I will be your storyteller. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Old Ways Podcast Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle Blood Moon Rising. I'm your storyteller, Storyteller Rena, and tonight we have some very, very interesting events to attend. But first, we need to get into some introductions. So, to my right. Hi, this is Mike, and I play Marcus Voss of Clan Bruja, who is about to have a wonderful night. I'm sure he is. And to Marcus's right. Hi, my name is Tegan, and I'm playing Rom the Shaman, and I am so very hungry and ready to party. Hungry and ready to party. That's a great combination. And at the end of the table, we have... Hi, this is Allie, and I play Katerina Bogdanovich of Clan Toreador, and I have no idea what I'm doing with my life anymore, or unlife, as it were. Do any of us? And since we are in the missing Vince Markovich formation, last but not least, we have... This is Tiffany, and I play Alex Giovanni, and we definitely have a party to go to. Rock on. All right, so it is still the night of October 31st, Halloween. All of you have completed your meeting with Billy the Hammer. No one died much to the surprise of perhaps some of the younger vampires in the Coterie. And you have other business to attend to for the evening, putting aside most thoughts of blood moons and dreaming and, well, hunger for most of you. You now have some events to attend. As Marcus drops Vince off at home, as he requested, Vince says he has some work to do, Who knows what that means with a Tremere. And you can now get to your other shenanigans. So let's start with Alex and Rom, who had a party to attend. Yes, uh, we will, yeah, go back to my place and uh, get our costumes on. And then uh, head on down to the party. What am I wearing this time? What did you put me in? I'm putting you put me in a toga. Perfect. Yeah, and I'm wearing, like, a very, like, sheer, almost see-through, um, like, Greek dress, uh, have a, a wig that's long brown hair, crown, just going as, you know, Aphrodite, basically. I think this is the point when I'm just glad that Rom doesn't have, like, these full chest tattoos under the toga and everything. The two of you are heading out to your party. Mm -hmm. Rom, you're you're hungry. You're not doing so well at the moment. But Alex kind of insists that you need to go to this party. So you are in the backseat of the car wearing a toga. You haven't eaten in a while. And when you did eat, it wasn't exactly satisfying. So it's going to be an interesting rest of the night for you. So Alex, where is this party? Well, I would also reassure Rom that there should be cattle for him to feed from, not like literal cows, because he's probably going to look at me weird when I say that. Anyways, uh, so we, I would imagine that the Nephilim Temple is probably on the edge of town, probably. And yeah, that's where we're headed. You arrive at what Alex has described to you, Ram, as a temple. So what does it look like 
Alex, and uh, how many people can we expect to be there? Well, it depends how many people are in this area, but I would I would assume probably at the very least maybe a couple hundred because, I mean, San Francisco is fairly decent sized and then there's a couple decent sized cities near it. So we would all probably congregate into this area. I picture it very much like a, probably a big mansion, but inside is very gilded and very, you know, posh and, you know, lots of gold and spiral staircases and, you know, marble everywhere kind of thing. So the two of you disembark from the vehicle, much to the relief of Alex's driver, and you can make your way into the temple. It's not, say, a bustling Elysium sort of place. There's not as many of your cults in San Francisco as you would perhaps like, Alex, but there's still a a couple dozen. That's pretty good. So the two of you enter. What do you do? I'm just looking to have fun, so I'll see what's going on in the different rooms, and oh, also gotta find several, probably you know, um, willing participants for Rom to feed. Yeah, I'm just looking at the differently dressed characters, and I'm just like, you know, just like humming under, you know, or like singing to myself, just like, just wanna be, wanna be with you in the moonlight. I'm just dancing, like nervously. Rom is perhaps a little more manic than normal. Yeah, yeah. Rom, Rom doesn't do so well when he's hungry at We've all. We've noticed. We've noticed. Half the city has noticed by now, Rom. So Rom is fidgeting and looking around and singing under their breath. And so, Alex, you have a look around. All the doors are open. No one really goes in for closed doors at this kind of event. You see a few ghostly figures, actually, sort of floating their way through the halls. The veil is very thin here, which is why the temple was built here. And on October 31st, on Halloween, it is even thinner. And so some ghostly spectral forms are actually moving around visibly. Rom, you sort of see the outlines of these ghostly figures moving through the halls. You don't see them quite as well as Alex does, but you do catch a a sort of ghostly glimpse as they move. The shit is that? Basically, uh, anything goes. So whatever you want to do is going to be here. This is for good times. Rom cannot physically raise one of their eyebrows any higher than it already is raised at Alex. And I'm just going to be like, Alex, I had no idea this side of you existed. This is, this is unprecedented. It, it, it's a surprise to be sure, but a delightful one. As you say that, Rom, a young woman dressed in a, a, a tunic, very, very short tunic, barely covers anything, and tall gladiator sandals drapes herself over your shoulders and just giggles and says, Hail Caesar. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to like look over to the side and just be like, oh, hey, oh, oh my gosh. So this is, this is like a whole thing. Yeah, whatever you want to do tonight. Is this is this a vampire or a or a human on my shoulder? This one appears to be human. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I feel like I need to roll something. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm at four hunger. I feel like I need to roll something because I can probably smell them. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yes, so give me a willpower minus four because you're hungry. So you can smell her perfume, but you can also smell the iron underneath, and you can feel her veins pulsing through her fingers, that heartbeat as she's stroking your cheek. Holy crap, was that a good roll? Well, kind of. Oh no. Because the thing is you're on this messy critical. It means that your bestial nature shows itself 
even as it allows you to resist just ripping her throat out. How does, uh, how does Rom resist just draining this human dry, but still show the monster inside? Oh, in that case, I think that we would try to um, dominate them or compel them, if that's, a, if that's possible. I think so, in this situation. No, absolutely. So let's see. I think that Rom would look at them and say, why don't you go round up some of your friends and find us a nice, quiet place in a corner somewhere? And she just giggles and she tweaks your nose a little bit says Ave and drifts away calling for some some of her friends you assume you can't quite make out the names it's very loud in here there's various noises coming from all the different rooms but she's poking her head into a room and yelling for someone I'm gonna look at Rom and tell him that you are free to feed But if anyone dies, I will have your head. Alex, you said anything goes. This is not anything goes. This is most things go and then sometimes your head goes and that's not anything goes. What are you what are you doing to me here? There are people that provide this herd and it needs to be maintained. Murder is never on the ca- on the table. When I said anything goes, I was talking fun things. I didn't realize that you were uh, into murder. I'm no, it's a little not, masochism here and there, sure, but no one has to die. It's 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 not it's not about it's not about what I'm into, Alex. It's it's more I I. I, I, and I just look Alex in the in the face. And I'm like, the the beast is very present tonight, and if if we want to have a a magical evening, if we want to have a good evening, then we've got to find a way to at least take the edge off a little bit first. Well, I said you could feed, but that doesn't mean you have to kill them. So should I leave you alone or do I have to babysit you tonight? How about for a minute, just for like a minute, you know, just like a minute, you stick with me for a bit because um, I might need you to grab the nape of my neck and, 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 and just keep me off that, 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 that bowl of cream there for just a little bit because I am, I am... I'm not doing so great. Okay, well, we can find a way to make this fun. As as you say that, the girl in the very short, short tunic is waving at you, and you see three of her friends. There's a, a young man and two other young people, and they're all wearing similar short tunics. They appear to be dressed as muses, and they're all poking their heads out one room and waving at you. Um, I will usher Rom that direction. Oh, you don't have to usher Jack shit. Like <laughs> Rom is Rom is already there. So what's in this room then that they chose? So in this room, it's one of the smaller rooms, but it's still pretty fabulous. There's a lot of these low couches, very Greco Roman style that you lay on to eat. Uh, set up around a table in the back, but there's also cushions all over the floor. There's someone playing a harp in the background, one of those giant standing harps. And there's very heavy velvet curtains hung all around the room. Do we have glasses in here? Yes. Okay. I will um, sit the um, kind down and sit Rom across from them. And I will hand them the cups to fill. And then we will drink that way. That way I can keep Rom off of them. 
So you're like kind of standing there at this point. I'm pretty I imagine I'm sitting on a chair and I'm just going to like lean against my my head against your hip just because I'm just like I I don't think I can I don't think I can focus. <laughs> Make it, it makes it really easy if you have to put me in a headlock. Nah. We'll get you a glass. Like civilized human. Okay. So Rom, you are feeding from this goblet, this chalice. It's glass, but gilt-edged as this young woman cuts open a vein on her wrist and she's looking at you and making eye contact with you the whole time as she fills the glass with her own blood. Oh, that's terrible. I'm focusing on the glass. I'm like, is this, is this William Sonoma? We're like, (laughs) this is this is really nice. This is good. I will not let her hand Rom the glass directly because I don't want him to grab her. So. Okay. So she goes to lean in and hand the glass to Rom and you intercept and she pouts. Look, still making eye contact with Rom the whole time. And I will hand it to Rom. Hey, thank you. That's, I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, this is oh god this is this glass really transmits warmth very very well yeah no no that's it that's all I can say I'm gonna go ahead and just um I'm gonna gonna chug this like a hot cocoa all right so I will tell you Rom that because you're at four hunger and you're not feeding directly from the vein you're going to have to take three glasses of this in order to reduce by one hunger. All right, each time I'm going to, I'll have like a different, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, you know, slanja, and then like the next time I'll be like, kampai, and then like the next time I'll be like, cheers, and I'm just going to, I'm going to just try to fill that empty space in my soul. It doesn't quite work, but you taste the offerings of three of these five young people, as they offer it to you via Alex taking the glass out of their hands and handing it to you. And it does take the edge off just a little bit. You are still very hungry, but you feel a little bit more in control of yourself. You feel like maybe you're not going to run wild on a rampage. And Alex, the other two, offer you some of their blood as well. Sure, because I mean, at this point, we're already infected, so I'm just going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> I'm not worrying about that. Alex, Alex, uh, the the second girl is a vegan. You can you can it's you can tell. Oh, okay. Just in case that's like not your thing, just letting you just letting you know. Oh God. So you satiate yourself a bit, Alex, and Rom, you take the edge off of your burning hunger, and all five of these humans are sitting there looking at you expectantly, Rom. They're all looking at you. Well, everyone, fantastic. I just wanted to say thank you for coming out to, what's this place called, Alex? What's this place called? It doesn't really have a name. Thank you for coming to the place with no name. I appreciate all of you tonight. Um, why, why are they looking at me that way, Alex? I think that they're looking to have some fun. Oh, fantastic. Okay. In in that, that, that is, that is going to be a thing. That is not normally my thing. All right. Well, if it's not, then you can just have company. My thing is down the hall with the chains. So, unless you want to join me there. Rom is like, nice, sweet. Be there in a minute. Give me, give me, give me like, give me like five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes. That seems right. Don't kill anyone. I don't. Okay, sweet. I will not kill anyone. And I'm going to find the very big red room in this place. You know exactly where that is. You've been here many times over the years. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And they are waiting for you. Yay. 
So we'll leave the two of you for the moment, having various degrees of fun. And we'll turn the camera over to Marcus, who has dropped Vince off for the night and now has the whole rest of Halloween to amuse himself. So Marcus, what are you planning to do? I have so many things to do tonight. Um, Amusement is but one of them. Uh, So after I drop Vince off, I'm going to make a direct uh, stop at a building which should be closed, but likely the occupant is still within. I'm going to stop by the bakery. All right. So you make your way over to Dragonfly Confections. The sign outside does say closed, but you know Katarina was heading directly there after the meeting with Billy. Indeed I do. So Katarina, you went straight home. You've had a lot to do over the last couple nights. You're feeling perhaps a little bit less in control than normal. And you had a very tense meeting with one William Mallet. And when you get back, the bakery's closed because you sent off everyone to, as you call it, quarantine. You make your way up to your apartment and the door, these beautiful doors that Frank made for you, part has transformed into a hand and it's sticking out towards you and it is holding what looks like an envelope. I grab the envelope? You take the envelope and the hand melts back into the door and it just looks like two ivory doors again. That's so gross. You go into your apartment holding the envelope and it's got your name written on it in very elegant cursive. It's Katerina Bogdanovich. And... Do you open it? I think I'm going to change into slightly less formal clothes, meaning I probably just take off my jacket and put on a loose fitting shirt. And then I will open it. So you get a little more comfortable and you sit down, you open the envelope and inside is a letter written with quill pen. You recognize the the style of ink and also the very distinctive cursive as being that of one Vera Giovanni. And the letter just says very simply, My dear Katerina, I am sorry I did not see you when I left, but Paula arranged very fast tickets to Rome. My bodyguard is coming. He is my ghoul, as you know, and he will keep us safe. Thank you for all you have done. You have been a true friend, and I will miss you very much. Please be safe. We'll come back soon, I hope. And perhaps we will eat together again. Love, Vera Giovanni. And her personal seal is stamped at the end. I'm going to take the letter and put it in a drawer with what few correspondences I have. There aren't a whole lot. As you put away this letter, Marcus, what are you doing? I am stopping outside the confectionery and uh, I'm going to knock on the door. Even though I have her office number. Yeah, I'll knock. Yeah, so you knock and you don't hear anything. You don't see Lucy, the shop assistant, moving around inside like she normally would be at this time of night. It's just dark. Okay. I'll uh, take my cell phone out and call Katerina's office number. All right. So, Katerina, you hear the office phone downstairs ringing. And here I was, just comfortable and ready to let the night pass in peace. I'll go downstairs. I'll go into the office. Go downstairs. I'll go into the office and flip the light on because nobody's here. And I will answer the phone. This is Katarina. Are you inside by chance spending Halloween night all to yourself? Well, if I was not inside, I don't think I would answer the phone, yeah? It's a rhetorical question. It was meant to be rhetorical. That's okay, though. I was thinking... With our business with the uh, 
coterie nearly at a conclusion. It might be nice to, um, well, to go out and um, perhaps see some other kindred. There is, after all, likely something happening at Elysium tonight, it being Halloween. And I remembered that you're a little difficult to get a hold of directly. Well, he's given that my pager is in, well, too many pieces to be repaired. Is it? Yes. Mm. These things do happen. I've been known to break a few phones myself. We had an opportunity a little while ago to have a social call, which was um, interdicted by uh, an old friend. Yes. I was hoping we would we would have an opportunity to, um, as I mentioned at the time, uh, circle back to something a little bit more private. There's a long pause, very long pause. And you would think that Elysium would be private. I think it'll be private enough. I don't mean to I mean private as in you and I alone. That's far too forward, right? I would think private is you and I without, say, an old friend from the East. Well, if I remember correctly, our last social engagement perhaps was more alone with just the two of us, yeah? Or was supposed to be? It was supposed to be, yes. It was. So, in that case, I don't suppose technically it would be too forward because it was already arranged before. There's a nice and uh, wonderful pier walk I could show you. My time at the docks has afforded me quite the uh, opportunity to see all that the coastline has to offer. That would be fine. I will ask if you wanted to visit Elysium, given that it is a big night among our kind. Mm -hmm. I think a short social call there wouldn't be a bad idea. After all, who knows who we might see. I will have to get dressed and do myself up appropriately, yeah? Yes. Perhaps an hour, an hour and a half. Yes, that will take some time, but I do have a request. Certainly. Given that my pager is in well, too many pieces, would you be willing to bring me a cell phone that is as low tech as possible? Low tech. Yeah, certainly. Uh, something simple, perhaps something durable. There's a Nokia brand, I'm sure, that would be useful for you. Just please bring whatever you deem appropriate, given that, well, it is very hard to find a pager nowadays, and I suppose cell phones are necessary in this day and age. Certainly. But if you'd like it as straightforward as possible, I'm sure I can find something. I have to go change anyway, so... I will say an hour and a half? Yes, that will be enough. I Very will well. be waiting downstairs in that time, and I will be ready to go. And if you are late... I will be very disappointed. I think you'll find it's going to be quite the evening. I won't be late. Good. I will see you soon. And I hang up the phone. <laughs> and my plans are fairly simple. I'm going to head back to the office. I'm going to get changed into something, likely something black and something slightly more formal than, um, we'll say, the leather jacket uh, offers. And, um, and yeah, if I can find a Nokia phone for her, I absolutely will. 
because they're durable as hell and I don't need her, you know, Jeremy pivying and a phone off of the wall somewhere and destroying it. Yeah. That that'll be my aim. Um, if nothing else, my, my if I can't find something like that specifically, then what I'll probably do is I will find a phone that is a non-touchscreen phone, a non-smartphone. Because what she wants is a phone she can make calls with. She's not interested in in uh, necessarily using the browser function or apps function of it. You do manage to obtain a Nokia that is more recent, but it still functions the same way. For now, you can get a prepaid card to go with it if uh, if you think that's something Katarina would like. Yeah, I'll probably just go that route. And then what I'm going to do for her is load it up with just an, an egregious amount of minutes. Uh, so that way she doesn't have to worry about it for a while. I want to make sure that she's set and ready for any anything that might be necessary in the future as far as phone conversations. How sweet. So you change, you get ready. It's not without its own hooks, of course. Of course. And you procure a phone for Katarina. So Katarina... You have hung up the phone. You no longer have a quiet night ahead of you. What do you do? Well, first off, this is bullshit. I was going to have a nice relaxing night in because Halloween's overrated. But I'm going to go and take a brief shower. And I will appropriately do all of my makeup. And I will stand in front of my closet trying to decide what I'm going to wear out of like a hundred outfits. And I will probably just settle on a mid-length dress that is black with some probably silver accents along the collars and the cuffs and the hem of the skirt. And I am going to wear a pair of low heel knee-high boots and... This outfit, of course, is not complete without my red trench coat. Of course. So the 90 minutes pass. Katerina, you are downstairs, appropriately attired for the evening. And Marcus is waiting for you. I will open the door and I will tuck my keys into one of the pockets of my trench coat and I will walk outside. I will open the door to the car for her. I will get in. And then we will head to Elysium. Uh, After I put the car in gear, I will pass her the phone and say, you should be set for quite a while. Understood. Thank you for picking this up for me. I do not believe that trying to get fun myself would go very well. Hmm. I head to Elysium. All right, so you make your way down to the Vampire Club. Very, very familiar with it, of course, and with Sebastian. Him being a member of your own clan and him being absolutely everywhere. With everyone and sometimes in everyone. So, you are very familiar. You are very familiar with the Vampire Club and our dear, dear, dear Sebastian. It is busier tonight Marcus than it was when you came and paid a visit to Sebastian a couple nights ago. Certainly. There's definitely livelier music. You can already hear it from the outside as you pull up. And there's a lot more people going in and out. By people, I mean vampires with the, the occasional human escort. How loud is it in here? You haven't gone all the way in yet. You can hear it vaguely outside because of your heightened senses, right? Your vampiric senses. But uh, Katarina, it is uh, appropriately 1950s swing music at the moment. So perhaps it takes you back a bit. It's been a while since I've heard this kind of music. Yeah, they don't play it much anymore, do they? No, they sure don't. Yeah, I'm very very interested to see who else is here as well. So I will definitely be keeping an eye out for the sheriff. Although I'm betting Esmeralda's a little busy still. Um, Probably still yet on the hunt. 
since you haven't gotten any reports about the blood hunt ending, you can fairly safely make that bet. So you go into Elysium and you are greeted not by Sebastian this time, but by a somewhat muscular man with dark hair and a dark mustache wearing a white tank top and very, very tight jeans. This is a man you know, Katarina, part of your own clan as Farouk. He is Sebastian's right-hand vampire, so to speak. Whenever Sebastian's busy, Farouk will come in and take things over for a little bit. And he smiles at you and he says, Darling, I haven't seen you around here in quite some time. Sebastian is, of course, quite busy tonight, as you can see. And he laughs this deep, throaty laugh. But, of course, he sent me to give you a little bit of whatever it is you're interested in this evening. You can have it all, darlings. Just ask. Well, I suppose I should go say hello to more of our clan, but... I do not anticipate that I will be here all night. So if I do not see you before I depart, know that I will come by pretty soon. Yes. Well, any night you grace us with your presence, my dear, is truly a magical night. Oh, you might want to say hello to our new primogen, by the way they're here, making the rounds. I don't suppose you've heard since Claudio's on the outs. Yes. Well, I suppose. Marcus, do you mind if I depart for a few moments? Not at all. Would you take me so I can meet them? Yeah? It would be my pleasure. And he extends an arm. And I will gracefully put my hand through it and my hand is resting appropriately on his elbow. And he leads you off through the crowd. There's a a bunch of different clans represented here tonight. There's no gangrel so far as you can tell, which is not that big of a surprise, but there are a decent number of Toreador, Ventru. Uh, You see a couple of Sombra skulking around in the background. Uh, There's even a few Bruja here having animated conversations uh, as they make their way towards the dance floor. So, Marcus, Farouk has taken Katarina off somewhere to meet the new primogen for Clan Toreador. So what would you you like to do with your time alone in Elysium? I'm looking for Jean. All right, so you're going to go looking for Jean. It takes you a few minutes. It is a lot more crowded in here. There's a lot of noise and music and vampires talking and you can hear other sounds from other rooms and you finally find in a back corner away from everyone else away from the dance floor but in a place where she can see pretty much everything (laughs) is Jean Valentine the Seneschal she's sitting on a low couch with her feet propped up on a low table across from the couch and she's moodily drinking out of a very, very big glass. Good evening, Jean. How are you? She looks up at you. She's got really dark circles under her eyes now. Much, much darker. Her eyes look a little sunk. You can see her hand is shaking slightly around the glass. She throws back half the glass in one go and sets it down and says, Marcus... Should have known you'd be here tonight. I look around. Why is that? I don't know. It just seems like everybody is out partying. It's like <laughs> you feel the doom coming. She stares into her glass. Do you feel doom? She bears her fangs in a bit of a snarl. She's moving, you suspect, a little bit more towards the end here. She doesn't seem as in control of herself as she normally is, and even less in control than she was when you delivered Eli to her a few nights ago. Dying, Marcus, what the fuck do you think? Throws back the other half of the glass. I sit down 
on the couch next to her. Like very familiar, almost predatory. And I say, we're working on something to save you. I need you to hang in there. But it's only going to be useful to you if you keep from coming apart at the seams. She lets out this low, bitter laugh. The city's coming apart at the seams, Marcus. How the fuck am I supposed to keep it together? And she looks off to the corner and yells at something in French. And a uh, waiter comes running up with another giant glass of wine. Or what humans would think would be wine. How are you supposed to keep it together? Well? The prince is just talking to Eli Mm. down in the dungeon. Won't even let me in. Don't think they trust me right now. Why wouldn't they trust you? You keep their house. Yeah. And I didn't keep Claudio out. He was there for years, Marcus. I'm not sure I trust me anymore. Hmm. That is something you're going to have to clear up with yourself then. There is a future that's coming. It's one that's beyond... Maybe beyond the current state of things. You need to believe that that future's possible. All I'm focusing on is surviving this, Marcus. Right now, that's all I can fucking do. You're not dreaming, are you? You don't know what it's like. I'm certainly not dreaming. It's like being a Malkavian all the time. I don't even think I'd like it some of the time. No. And imagine being one at night and when you're sleeping Hmm. and all the voices and the blood always hungry Marcus well I stand up I am here to have a good time and hopefully very soon you and I will have a glass together after your predicament clears up and we can talk all about the future then If you say you're working on a solution, I'm sure you are. Just tell your Tremere not to take too long. (laughs) My Tremere. Hmm. That's funny. I'll do what I can. Meanwhile, Katerina, you have been escorted through Elysium into a back room. There's about 15 other vampires in here, all sitting around, talking, drinking, chatting. They're all Toreador. And in the middle of the room is a tall, slender vampire with very short, blonde hair. Got a, an undercut wearing very dark makeup, dark lipstick, and very elegantly dressed in skinny jeans and a leather jacket and very high heels. And they're holding a glass in one hand as they're talking to people, and you recognize this as Dara. It's the only name they give anyone. And the way they're talking to people, the way they're holding themselves now, gives you a fairly good idea of who your new primogen is. So you go into Elysium and you are greeted not by Sebastian this and Dara darling. You know Katarina, of course. And Dara turns and looks at you with impeccable makeup and eyeliner just sort of boring into your soul if you had one. Ah, Katarina. Pleasure. Yes, it is nice to see you. What can I do for you? Everyone seems to want something tonight. I was just here to give my regards and say hello. I will not take up too much of your time. They tilt their heads slightly as if they weren't expecting just a simple hello. Well, that's refreshing. I'll remember that. And they smile and lift their glass to you. Have a good night. Thank you. That's it, darling. Don't have any wild parties or schemes or anything you want to propose? 
Why did I bring you back here then? Because I wanted to meet our new Brementon, yeah? You're too careful, Katerina. I'll get you in trouble one of these days. I'm pretty sure my carefulness has been what has made me so successful, yeah? Will you escort me to where we are keeping the drinks and then you are free to go? Oh, dismissed. Thank you. I appreciate the dismissal. And he smiles to let you know he's he's teasing you. You've known each other since you've moved here, and he's been here quite a while, so you understand each other fairly well. And so he leads you back out into the main dance floor area and towards the drinks. Uh, the music has changed, and there is a tall man with blonde hair and one green eye and one blue singing Velvet Gold Mine, and he looks across the floor and he winks at you and goes back to his song as Sebastian leads you over to the drinks table. So let's turn the camera back over to Rom and Alex for a little bit. So, Rom, you've you've had a good 25 minutes. Actually, 27 by your count. The humans seem pleased. No one's okay. dead. That's good. I, I aim to serve. You've finished up. The humans are sleepy and happy and three of them are all making out in a corner now. What would you like to do, Rom? I guess I'm going to go looking for Alex. Is my toga like on right? Is it, is it, hold on, I gotta like, ah, move the toga. Okay. Let's... Well, I imagine as the night goes on, more and more people won't have costumes on. <laughs> I'm gonna put my toga back on, but I'm gonna tie it around my waist with a little knot. So... Rom is now wandering around with his toga as a kilt. And uh, you're looking a little bit better, Rom. You notice there's these tall mirrors everywhere. Mirrors on the ceiling, mirrors on the floor, everywhere. Of course. And you do notice that the shark bite in your abdomen does seem to be mostly healed over. But you're kind of surprised it hasn't healed completely considering feeding and all the other things you've been doing. But it's, it, you don't look like there's half of you missing anymore, so that that's a start. I assume I also noticed some human bites, and I'm like, oh, well, uh, usually it's the other way around. Absolutely. Definitely got a hickey or three. So you make your way through the hallways, I assume poking your head into various rooms to see if you can find Alex. And I've probably been going around collecting the ghosties. I'm going to see what trouble we can get up to with the ghosts. And in one room at the back, you see Alex surrounded by these spectral sort of floating wisps that you can't quite make out, Rom but you hear whispering. That's what it sounds like to you, Rom, is whispering, and it's a dozen whispering voices, and Alex is just kind of standing there chatting with the ghosts. How's the conversation going? I'll be like, they're just doing their uh, haunted mansion routine. Just swing in there and just be like, grinning, grinning ghosts. We're out to socialize. Hey, what you doing there? What you got? Friends? I'm going to try and catch up on any gossip I can with these ghosts since uh, I don't see them very often. I've probably seen them before, but now we can chat freely. I had other plans, but then I for you know, Alex probably forgot at some point and was like, oh, the veil's real thin. And then that like overrode <laughs> everything else. Yeah, you were having some fun and then a ghost floated by and that distracted you. Yeah. And I probably just left somebody hanging somewhere. <laughs> Quite literally. Yes. So you're chatting with these these spectral forms and Rom is watching in confusion, which Rom has been doing all night pretty much, so that's nothing new. I'm confused because I thought there were going to be more whips and chains. A couple rooms over. I mean, you can go find those if you want to, Rom. No, I'm fine. I came to find, I came to find Alex. So, uh, Alex is 
talking to these ghosts and there's about a dozen of them in here that you've collected, Alex. And uh, one of them is telling you about how they've seen several familiar vampires on the other side, but that they can't speak. We try to talk to them and we try to talk to them. They, they don't have anything to say or, or maybe they can't. I don't know. They, they don't have tongues. Oh, uh, all of them? And then you hear all the ghosts whispering, all of them? Wow. That's not good. Yeah, we're... There is a poison that is cir- circulating through the community right now. And so a lot of these uh, familiar vampires that you see uh, died rather horrifically. I'm surprised some of them aren't straight specters, to be fair. Something holding them back, holding them back. Trapped here with us. They don't like it. Hee <laughs> So you're saying all of them, though, are stuck? I mean, I found some fetters, but I wonder if that's part of the ritual or the poison or whatever's going on. And you hear some chattering among the ghosts, and Rom, the air in here starts to feel cold. And you don't normally feel cold the same way anymore, being undead, but it feels icy cold for a moment. And the noise of the rest of the temple, the partying and the music and and the very, very loud sex, all just kind of mutes is what it feels like. And Alex, you see the sort of glowing green outline for a moment in the center of the room and the ghosts are all chattering you can't quite make out what they're saying but it gets louder and louder and then you see the spectral form of Luther Garibaldi resolve in the center of this room and he's dressed much the way he was when you last saw him in Unlife, in this rumpled suit, battered old fedora, but his eyes are hollow as he's looking at you, and he opens his mouth as if he's trying to speak to you, and he makes no sound. And the the, the ghosts are all chittering and, and pointing towards him. I'm going to approach Luther... I was wondering when you'd make a present, you'd make yourself known, considering um, I have some of your things. He nods. I will fish in my... Oh, I'm not wearing my suit. Okay, nope. I guess I'll look around for paper and a pen. Give me a D10 roll. Or when you say that you have something of his, he points to the spectral hat on his head. I nod at him. Uh, that was a five. Okay. So, on a five, I'm going to say there isn't in here, but you could potentially send, if you can, in this sort of quiet, muted space, if you can see your way to poke back into the full-on temple and ask for someone to bring you pen and paper, you could do that, or you could send Rom. Yeah, I'm sending Rom. Uh, I'm going to look over. Rom, Rom, quickly, I need paper and a pen. Is that Luther? Yes. Now, can you hurry, please? All right. He looks like a couple Legos short of a spaceship. Yeah, no, let me um, go find a pen. I'm sure somebody's using one inappropriately somewhere. All right. So, Rom, give me a D10. I rolled a six. Is that good? Yep. Six, six is high enough. It takes you a couple minutes, and as you're scurrying around, you poke your head into one room that is very, very red, and there is a vampire uh, who is suspended from the ceiling, just sort of hanging there, shirtless. Uh, Seen Alex? They were here a few minutes ago. Uh, Yeah, no, I'll send them back this way. Hey, do you got a Sharpie? It doesn't matter what color. Uh, Yeah, there's some red ones. 
He nods his head over to a table. There's paper. It looks like some consent forms and a bunch of pens. Oh, well, those are far cleaner than I expected. All right, fantastic. And I'll grab a Sharpie and I'll go back to Alex. So a few minutes later, Alex, as you've been looking at Luther and he's just been staring helplessly back at you and the ghosts are talking to each other and trying to see if they can get him to talk. Rom comes back with a stack of consent forms and a Sharpie. I will uh, put the uh, Sharpie and papers on like a table or end table and gesture for Luther to use those. I'm going to tell him, you know, it's going to take less energy today to do that. So if you have anything to say, today is the day to do it. He nods and you see just the sort of deep weariness in his eye sockets. Like these hollowed out eyes that are looking back at you and he just slowly moves over and he looks at the ghosts and just sort of nods his head like, get out. And the ghosts all chitter at each other, but they retreat back to the corners. They're still there, but they're not surrounding you anymore. Mm -hmm. And Luther stretches out a spectral hand, almost as if in surprise he can do it. And the pen moves. The Sharpie moves and begins to write on the paper. Waiting for you. For what? Talk. Oh. Oh. Because I'm going to be the only one that's going to be able to see you and talk to you. Got it. He nods. Why bring Shaman? Oh, why not? And Luther's incorporeal form turns and looks you up and down, Rom, and tilts his head And he lo- as he looks at your abdomen. He turns back to you, Alex, and scratches out. Annoyed Andrew, I see. Yeah, something got him. Uh, uh, probably sure I believe you what can I say I'm delicious dead but delicious dead but delicious right this hard I know I don't remember and he points to his his mouth when he opens his spectral mouth you see there's nothing there It's just a void. Oh, you don't remember. Why can't talk? Right. We have all been, well, not all of us, most of us have been poisoned. You were the beginning. He nods slowly, taps the paper with the, with the Sharpie like he's thinking. Luis, too. I would assume so, but I haven't had I haven't been able to get access to Luis. I mean, you know, the prince and I have such a wonderful relationship. Ha. Luis. Mm. Burn. Not here. Oh. Felix, not here. Really? What about Trevor? Trevor, here. What about... Karen was here, but is gone. Like, moved on? No, gone. Like, poof? Ash. Oh. And he seems a bit frustrated with how how long it takes him to write anything. Yeah. Because a Sharpie goes flying across the room and hits Rom in the head. Honestly, fair. If Ash not here moment than not. Oh. So there was a split second where they crossed over before they completely ashed. Yes. Karen to kid. Vince? Yes. Worried. Say more than second. No speak. No speak. I could believe that. Mm-hmm. Then gone is Ash. Yeah, she, uh, she had a not-so-pleasant time as well. He nods. Can't talk. Each other. 
Yeah, one of the last things is to tear out your own tongue, which is horrible and unfortunate. And I wonder how they got it so that that it has to be a ritual. It has to. Tremere. Yeah, I know. And I know who it is. Grandmother's child. Yes. Question mark. That's what she thinks, and that's what I think as well. I know. I saw. Oh. Zachariah. Do you think that if we take out him that it will cure people that are infected now? He shakes his head. Purify. Yeah, that's what Vince is working on. But we have to stop Zachar. You said Zachariah, right? He taps the name again. Yeah. With the pen. So we got to stop him so that nobody else gets infected. Way to make this a work night. And I smirk at him. He shrugs. Hmm. Boring here. For you. Oh, you mean on the other side. Yeah, it probably is pretty boring. I mean, you can always hang out with me. Find restoration. Oh. Zachariah might know. Powerful. Might know how to restore you? Not life, unlife, whatever, but. And he looks at you pleadingly. I would think that would be something we could do. I might have to look into that. Ask Marcus about sect war. Something connected presence. He just keeps tapping the word something over and over as if he's thinking. So somebody or something that was in the sect war is also causing what's going on now. He shrugs. Or are they taking out people that took out them? Can't see. Can't see. Can't see. He sl- his shoulders slump a little bit. Can't work here. Can't work here. Just over and over and over. Well, if you also need a place that has more than enough energy and easier for you to communicate in, you know where my place is. Also has your, uh, and I like point to my head, like to a hat. He nods. Saw you. Saw you and Trevor. I tried my best. Rom, you're getting half of this conversation because you can't see what he's writing. Oh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. As long as Luther doesn't want to hang out at my house, I'll have to play podcasts on full volume to drive him out. You tried, but ate him. Not ideal. No, I didn't really have control of that situation. Unfortunately. Good thing. Not Sheriff and how. Ha! Huh. That's if anybody finds out. Are you going to snitch on me? Find. And he points at his open mouth. And no. Deal. Deal. Wait, what are you making a deal about over there? He wants me to help get his tongue. Do we, do we have, like, I mean... He's already dead. Not, yeah, and he can't speak. Oh. He doesn't need the physical tongue. He needs it spiritually. No, I get that. I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, it's nothing against you, Luther. Just, you know, just, uh, a dead sheriff is, you know, keeps things... Dead, dead dead men tell no tales. And the piece of paper, something scrawls on it, and then it floats up next to him, and you can see it, Rom. It says, I tell tale. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Hey, oh, yeah. Um. Hey, we should get that tongue. Mm-hmm. I know you, Rom. Yeah. 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 And there is the slightest hint of a ghostly smirk on his face, and it's the first time he's looked anything other than depressed since he manifested in this room. 
Can't can't blame me for trying. All right, sweet. Yes, I can, motherfucker. Now that this night took a fucking turn. Many fucking turns. Yeah, well, not the fun kind either. Speak for yourself. I'm going to uh, collect the paper. Well, several papers or whatever. Um, and uh, usher Ram out. I've got research to do. I mean, you too, apparently. We better work on this together to find out if I, we can. I thought get... we were par- partying. It's, it's Halloween night, and now we're going to go do tongue research. Well, you can stay, and then Luther can tell me all your dirty secrets when I find his tongue. First off, phrasing. I, uh, 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 fine. All right. Well, where are we going? Are we going to, are we going to the, the secret tongue restoration library? Like, where are we going? Do you know where that's at? No, I don't get the fancy books. I've been asking for them and my mentor hasn't been sharing. Okay. I'm going to go back to my place and I want to see if I have anything, any rituals from the clan that can do something. So the two of you reluctantly leave the party. Luther's spectral form begins to waver and dematerialize as you leave the room. And no one really seems to notice that you're gone except for the original girl in the very short tunic. Uh, who looks at Rom and pouts and says, going so soon? Yeah, I'll be right back. I just got to run to the 7-Eleven. Grab a pack of smokes. Get me some Funyuns. Funyuns. Sweet. Yeah, do you want the the kind with the the spicy Funyuns? They got the spicy ones. Oh, I like everything spicy. All right, I'll be right back with no intention of coming back. And the two of you go back to Alex's apartment to do some tongue research, but not the fun kind. So let's switch the camera over to Katerina and Marcus at Elysium. Indeed. So Katerina, you have been deposited at the drinks table by Sebastian. And Marcus, you have finished your conversation with a very depressed looking Jean Valentine. In some small way, even though I think Jean's, you know, a fun person, I do somehow, somewhere down deep, I do enjoy the struggle of Clanless Ombra now these days. <sighs> but that said, I, uh, I will have an opportunity at some point, hopefully, to see some of my other clan mates. I can't imagine we are completely bereft of Clan Bruja here. No, there's definitely some Bruja hanging out. You see a couple of them uh, who have apparently just had a minor altercation, which is nothing new, but one of them is resetting a broken nose with an audible crack and then looking around for the nearest human to drink from to try and heal it up. So things are about standard. About standard. I don't imagine David would make his, uh, his way down to Elysium on such a... David hasn't been seen in Elysium in several years. Un- unsurprising, unsurprising. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll find something to drink. Um, or maybe I'll hold off. Come to think of it, yeah, maybe I'll I'll wait. I'm I'm still probably a little um, paranoid about blood supply. Just a little bit. I have my own. Uh, should I need it? So. Yeah, I'll go to the drinks table, if nothing else, is to uh, make sure that my uh, fellow coterie mate doesn't accidentally ingest some foul blood. All right, so you go find Katerina, who's standing at the table. Have you gotten a particular drink, Katerina? No, I was standing here so I'd be easy to find. And there you are. So... How is your new primogen? Well, they are... They are Toreador. Well, I should hope so. I should hope so. 
they are flashy, but that is not to be unexpected. Yeah. Very true. Do they have a particular art form they prefer? Do they let on to whatever um, new expose or uh, feature they might be doing? I did not ask. They are very busy with making their own interactions and with many of the clan already asking for favors and taking up the time. I simply wanted to say hello. I've heard it doesn't take very long once you get a position of power here in the city. People immediately start asking favors. That is why I will be waiting. Yeah? Yes, certainly. A calculated step is one better than something taken too risky. Correct. They changed the music in here, didn't they? Yes. It's very much glam rock now. Oh, okay. I see. I see we're, we're continuing to cycle up the uh, the calendar, as it were. I will, uh, I'll suggest to Katarina, perhaps, unless you have any other further business in Elysium, we can, uh, we can make our exit before the 90s arrive. Yes. Not the greatest decade for me. Well, the 50s and the 60s for where it was at. So, I am very happy to leave now that I have conducted my business and been social. Good. Then I, uh, I'll extend an arm towards the door and we can take our leave. Fantastic. You see Sebastian making out with two different men at the same time. He just sort of waves half-heartedly at you, but he's very, very focused on what he's doing or rather who he's doing. <laughs> can he even see us? Is he a wall of flesh? Sebastian sees everything. He somehow always seems to know when people are coming in and out, no matter what he's doing. Yeah, he saw everything except the, you know, except the Sabat in town. Good job, buddy. They didn't come into his club. Or maybe they did and he didn't see it. Also possible. But you are able to leave Elysium with the party still hopping. It's about about midnight. So just about to tick over into November 1st. Yeah. Uh, so my plan is to take Katarina to a portion, a very colorful portion of the San Francisco Riverwalk area, Baywalk area, as it were. Uh, there are some uh, art pieces that are down there. And there's even some neon displays that have got them a nice glow to them. Probably on the non war for working side of uh, the bay. I don't want to sully tonight with work. It's fairly easy to find a walking path down along the bay, especially when you leave Elysium. It's the Vampire Club is in this old abandoned yacht, and there's not a whole lot of humans down in this area. And the ones who are here are inside providing other purposes. So you can easily walk along around the bay from here. There's some paths, a few trails, there's a bike trail, but no one's really out using it tonight. Not at midnight. Everyone's at home, either with their kids or getting ready for work the next day after taking kids out for trick-or-treating. It's fairly quiet. You can hear some a, a rowdy party, it sounds like, from a boat out on the bay. Someone's having a very loud party out there. But it's it's fairly nice out here right now. Yeah, and even if it was, you know, 20 degrees out, we wouldn't feel the cold, which is kind of nice in a way. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll take a, a walk and we'll walk through some of the, um, the more artistic portions that the sculptures that they probably have set up or art displays and uh, ring in the 1st of November that way. And I'll, uh, I'll turn to her and say, how, how did you come to find baking to be your passion? It's one of the only things that I have left of my family. I got a fair amount of 
recipes from my mother. And they came from her mother. And I brought them with me when they sent me away to get me out of the grip of Russia. Which war? End of the second going into the the Cold War. I mm. was shipped over when I was 16. Yeah, I can only imagine. Hopefully they, uh, hopefully the ride over wasn't too terrible. Uh, I know some of the boats and some of the larger ships that they send overseas aren't necessarily the most comfortable ones. I don't remember how long I was on the boat but I was in cargo because it is very rare that one can pay the passage especially during that time yeah well and not to mention if you're trying to leave Russia during the war I'm sure that there was some sort of documentation that you didn't want to have to present it being a war Yes. And this whole conversation so far, I'm not looking at you at all. It's fine. I have the uh, fortunate uh, perspective of seeing not one, but two world wars. And it doesn't seem that much in Russia changes. No, I don't imagine it does. Russia is both a very simple place and a very complex country at the same time more so than in the other place that I've lived but you're here now and have been for some time and you've got your own bakery here but um, I know you're usually open most nights yes well then many of these issues that have occurred with the tainted blood supply, it is very hard for Vin to stay open, especially at night. Well, hopefully Vince can find a way around that relatively soon. Things can get back to normal. Well, it is going to take a significant amount of time and monetary, not that is a problem, efforts to get it back up and running. But I... This city has changed an awful lot in the past, oh, 80 or so years. A lot of people have come and gone, and not just kindred. Well, I haven't seen my parents since I left, and there has been no correspondence. I did the smart thing, I think. After the after things changed with me, I... I did my best to separate myself from them. It's hard enough being who we are to complicate things by watching people grow old and die. Yes. I simply wish to know how they died and what kind of lives they led. I did try some letters back then with no answer. After a handful I knew I wasn't going to get an answer I raise my eyes and head to look at as much of the stars as I can see before I look at Marcus and ask what is with this interrogation anyway interrogation what interrogation you are asking an awful lot of questions as if you are trying to delve into my life. <laughs> I think it's reasonable to wonder who you're working with. To know more about them. Especially if they find them fascinating. Well, I am just a simple baker. I think we both know that's not true. And you would know how. I think that people in the city know a lot about you. And some of those people have mentioned that you're not so simple. Well, then I must be introduced to to these individuals because 
I keep things very close to the chest, yeah? There are very few that I trust with mm. any sort of mm, personal information. So either you've done research or you have found out more through another channel. I am not what you would call your run-of-the-mill common rabble. Well, I have seen that outside of you taking out my doors. <laughs> Indeed. A, uh, an unfortunate and um, minor release of pent-up frustration. Not you exactly, but the doors were fixed. But we do not have to linger on this kind of unfortunate business. Yeah? Agreed. There's much to be done ahead. I suppose you find out about someone, you research someone, because you're trying to figure out where they sit or stand when it comes to what is next. And what is next for you? I think that there is going to be a great and powerful change in this city. And I think the kindred who are prepared for it are going to benefit the most. It's no secret that William's appearance is here for a reason. It's not just to check up on how the coterie is doing. It's not just to uh, play games with us or the prince. They've, they are a very real threat to how things are going to operate. And I'm not necessarily willing to throw in my lot with them. But I'm also not willing to just walk you through what I have planned. Because it's very important if alliances are going to be made that they be made properly. And so that's what I'm interested in finding out. That's what that's what the reason for all of the questions you understand. Where do you sit on the board? What are you interested in? And how might we benefit from knowing each other better? You see, this is bordering on talking business, yeah? <laughs> I, I uh, smile, a rather um, toothy grin. But not business. But a kind of business. A kind of business between two people. You and I. You are asking about alliances. And that is another kind of business. Politics is a whole realm of business, even if it is not necessarily one for monetary gain. This part of the conversation is done. I will not discuss that right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then, um, how would you like a drink? A safe one? I am not convinced that there are guaranteed safe drinks in the city anymore. I am. And I know just where to get one. Perhaps you could enlighten me first. Oh, of uh, my office. Very well. I'll walk us back to the car. You go back to the car, and I assume you're going back to the office? Correct. Okay. So, you go back to the union office. It's now about close to one o'clock in the morning by the time you've conversed and driven back. Mm -hmm. And the only car still in the parking lot is Marie's. And you can yeah. go up to the office. I'll head in and uh, let Marie know that she can leave for the evening. She nods. Um, Greg didn't come in tonight. Did he tell you anything? No, find out why. Okay, he's not answering his phone. Maybe he's just passed out again. I step over to her desk and write a number on a piece of paper. And I say, call this number, give them Greg's address, have them drive by the house. Don't go alone. Okay, got it. Uh, see you tomorrow, Marcus. 
Happy Halloween. Indeed. <laughs> Happy Halloween. And she departs. Uh, so I'll head uh, upstairs and I will get out a very specific bottle and two glasses in the outer office and uh, with the the table and the comfortable chairs and pour her a glass of uh, a fine vintage of um, blood. So Katerina, you have a fine glass and a Marcus. Well, first things first, I take off my trench coat and I give it to Marcus. I find a place to hang it up. There shall I sit. I think here is fine. I extend a hand towards the couch. I will take your hand and I will sit. I sit down a reasonable distance, not too far, not too close. And I will slowly pour that glass and I'll lean over and say to her, these are really, uh, well, it's all in thanks to Vince, honestly. I'm just going to stare at the glass because I have so many more questions I want to ask, but it, it, it borders on another kind of business that is not appropriate. No, right yeah, now. we wouldn't want to talk business, would we? dangerous it is it is it's against the rules right yes of course it's well if it is courtesy of Vince then hopefully perhaps we will be seeing more changes yeah I should hope so I should hope so I've no doubt the young boy is working dutifully and in due time, he'll come round. For now, though, shall I tell you a story? If you wish. I'm going to turn just the body angle a little bit and uh, face her a little bit more directly. It was 1995. We'd just gotten a word from the prince that someone had left a calling card a rather graphic one in one of the parks nearby and my sire David had called with a, an urgent need for a response they were concerned because the tides of change were coming again mostly from what was going on in Los Angeles it was burning its way all the way north and that fire was lit by a very terrible organization of strange and, quite frankly, violent vampires. We know them here in the city as the Sabbat. And when we arrived in the park, I was stunned at what they'd done. Not what they'd done to the bodies, but what they'd done to themselves. The uh, war pack that they had sent, five, six vampires, had decided that a rather graphic display of kindred uh, was in order to announce their presence. Um, they'd collected themselves into some sort of circle, and they'd pooled their own vitae together into a single goblet and each one of them was greedily drinking out of it in turn and I just remember hearing their voices chant up and up I was lucky that I'd caught them in whatever whatever religious practices that they were in the middle of and we had to do our best that night to deal with the situation directly. The prince's orders were clear. And so we were unfortunately forced to put several of them down. But they were in such a state of... I really can only say it in one way. They were in such a state of ecstasy during the fight 
that um, the men of the pack managed to stay completely aroused during the battle. Something that's very difficult to do. I don't know if it was the blood or if it was their religious fervor, but that kind of control over the blood is somewhat fascinating. Don't you think? Yes, it is interesting, but I have one very important question. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is the purpose of this story? I think it's fascinating what kindred bodies can do. And I'm supposing in a way I take a drink of the glass I set it back on the table. I'm kind of wondering if you'd be interested in any sort of kindred experimentation with maybe what our bodies could do together. There is a super long pause and I will just down the whole glass of blood. There's there, there's not a whole lot that I can say right now. And after the glass is drained, I will just put my head down and stare at my hands. This is not this is not something that I have any experience with. Well, I don't suppose anything has to be rushed. We have an eternity. That is not a guarantee. That is fascinating, then. I suppose, then, I'll at least need to know if you're willing to try. Yes, I am willing to try. Fascinating. I do not know how to relax very well. Well, perhaps I can be of assistance. That is potentially possible. And on that note, we will leave our vampires to their various extracurricular activities. I hope you will join us next time for some more fun in the dark. Thank you and good night.